Hey, this is Matthew Geller with OptometrySTudents.com, and you are listening to the short summary version of the interview with Dr. Veliki of Omni Eye Services. This version is the summed up version, stressing all the important points of the longer interview. In case you are busy and don't have time to listen to the full one, this is a great summed up interview. Check it out and enjoy. So, Mike, tell me a little bit about yourself and you know your history with optometry. Uh, I'm a 1992 graduate of Nuenco. Um, following uh, my graduation, I did a one-year residency with Omni Eye Services of New Jersey, and uh, I was asked to uh, to join the practice to try to grow one of our offices, and uh, I've been with Omni ever since. So, what is the best advice for students who are interested in residencies? Like, how can they become a better applicant? And what's something important to focus on if you know for sure you want to do a residency? I, I certainly would highly recommend it. I think that you know the additional year of training, the additional year of, of um, being able to see and do under someone else's guidance gives that person tremendously more confidence when they are finally on their own in practice. Um, I certainly wouldn't hesitate at all to recommend the residency, um, and I do think that not having done one at some point can come back to hurt you. I think that in the real world, when employment opportunities um, come your way, that equally qualified optometrists uh, that have equal job experience can find that they will uh, they will oftentimes be passed by in favor of someone that did uh, complete a residency program if they did not. So, you know, it, it may not be for everyone, and I don't think the time will ever come where you would regret having done a residency, but I can certainly see how um, you can regret not having done one. Or what, are, what are some of the things that we should focus on to uh, earn us a spot? What we look for, aside from grades, we look for um, recommendations from preceptors in your fourth year um, that can show that you were very comfortable um, with what you were seeing, you were inquisitive, asking questions, wanting to learn, willing to learn, um, you know, genuinely interested in in the rotation where you are, and, and have expressed some interest in doing a residency. Uh, we'll continue on to a different topic. I know that you are very involved with the New Jersey Society of Optometric Physicians, and that's NJSOP. So tell me a little bit about some of the victories that uh, NJSOP has achieved for its doctors and patients. Certainly the, the obvious victories, like uh, like New Jersey being able to get a uh, an oral therapeutic bill through. And, uh, you know, while that bill passed in 2005, I believe it was, um, you know, that was a, an almost seven-year process to get that legislation through. Uh, but, you know, that organized optometry, you know, the, the obvious are the big bills like that, but, you know, there's so many small day-to-day -day things that happen within the organization that really are invisible uh, to members. You know, things like being denied for a procedure because it's not, the insurance carrier believes it's not within the scope of practice of optometry, and, you know, NGSOP has a committee um, that deals specifically with the, the insurers and denials and making sure that optometrists are getting paid for the procedures that they do and, and uh, should be doing. There was a, uh, a bill several years ago that was put in place that uh, would prevent optometrists from selling eyeglasses to their own patients. That, uh, you know, this bill said optometrists selling glasses to their own patients violated health referral laws and it, it should be illegal. And as crazy as it sounds and as illogical as it sounds, that bill actually was put into a committee and was passed out of committee with a unanimous vote in favor of support of that bill before we were able to get it squashed. So, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes things that occur on a society level that, you know, the rank and file optometrists don't necessarily recognize. But I will tell you that if you're not involved, and you're not there to fight those battles, that the face of optometry can change a little, literally overnight. We're a legislated profession, and you know the, the reality is that you have legislators sitting in the state house of your respective state that don't necessarily understand optometry, and many of them couldn't even tell you the difference between an optometrist, an ophthalmologist, and an optician. And those people are the ones that are deciding what you do and when you can do it. So you know, it's important for organized optometry to be strong, to have a voice, and I think it's important for students to realize that 
you know, their voice is very important to that cause. They need to be involved because, you know, this is becoming your profession. You know, you're coming into a profession and, and the way you're going to be able to practice is not a birthright. It's an earned right that has been earned by, you know, your colleagues and predecessors. And uh, there's no guarantee that the, the optometry that you graduate into is the optometry that you're going to have 10 years from now. It's up to you and your colleagues to be sure that, you know, the youth movement of optometry continues to push our profession forward. You know, the reality is that whatever optometry school you graduate from, I mean, you you have the education that every practicing optometrist, in theory, should have. You are the most up-to-date, most current practitioners that are out there. And when you graduate and you get your first license in whatever state you get your license in, the cold reality is that you are going to be sacrificing some part of your education to practice in that state. Unless you're in Oklahoma where really you have free reign to practice everything that you've learned in school, in every other state, you know, you will be, you will have learned more than you will be able to do in practice. And that should be upsetting to a student. That should be upsetting to anyone in any state that they choose to practice in. And the only way that that's going to change is for you to get involved in that state's organized optometric structure and make it happen. Make it change because it is not going to change by itself. Any change that happens by itself will, will happen to the detriment of optometry because, you know, this is not just an offensive battle, it's a defensive battle as well. And that's important for new students right from day one to contact their state uh, optometric society, make sure that they are a member, and uh, to realize the value of their membership and to realize that it's going to be up to them to make sure that optometry is what they want it to be. You hit it right on the head, Matt. You put so much time and money and effort into becoming an optometrist that that profession is what is going to sustain you for your entire career. And, you know, that profession deserves your support. And there is nobody out there lobbying for you and for your profession other than your state optometric organization and the AOA. And I think it behooves every practicing optometrist, young or old, new grad or seasoned veteran, to be involved and to pay their dues uh, and to give back to their profession what their profession is giving to them. Optometry is a great profession. It offers tremendous flexibility. It's personally rewarding. It can be financially rewarding. But you know, there's no guarantee that the way you begin is the way you end. You need to be a part of the process. You need to pay your dues. There's strength in numbers. It is a cost of doing business. Just as you said, you wouldn't think twice that not having malpractice or health insurance, you know, this is just another bill that you should pay. It's practice insurance, the cost of doing business, and that's how you have to look at it. Being involved um, can will, will certainly make you a better optometrist. Um, we do members-only seminars on practice management, you know, how to be a better physician, how to be paid properly for the work you do, and how to bill properly for the exam that you perform. Uh, you know, we do those frequently for our members, uh, and they're exclusive to NGSOP members and uh, are not available to non-members of the society. So, yeah, I mean, I think being being involved and being in, uh, a member of your society um, will not only make you a better physician, it certainly can make you a more profitable uh, optometric physician because, you know, you really know what's the latest and the best way to do things. The optometry is, is no... Uh, no exclusion to the general rule that uh, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And, you know, being involved, working together with like-minded people that have a similar purpose and a similar mission, um, you know, you oftentimes will uh, will make a connection where you otherwise would not have been able to. And there are certainly plenty of success stories in this state of uh, very successful multiple doctor practices that came together through involvement with the NJSOB. The one thing that you could do to ensure your future, um, yep. I would have to say, be passionate about what you do. I, I don't like to see students thinking of optometry as a job. I don't like when I hear or see our interns talking about, you know, what they're going to do for their first job. Optometry is not a job. Optometry is a career. Very rarely something where you, 
you know, punch a clock, see your patients, punch a clock, and go home and have no worries about it. I mean, is, is a good provider is always thinking about their patients, um, is always available to their patients, and, you know, derives a great deal of personal satisfaction from helping people that are in need. You know, having somebody come to you to, to trust you to help them with their eyesight, which most people will agree is probably our most precious gift, is not something to be taken lightly. So, you know, we don't go from job to job. It, it's a career, and you should think of it as a career, and think of, of you always being the student, always wanting to learn, never having enough. And, uh, you know, I think that that type of mentality and that view of the profession will ultimately make you successful. Okay, that concludes the interview for today. I really hope everyone enjoyed it. I know I did. Um, please comment below any questions or comments, and we'll make sure that Dr. Veliki takes a look, and he will definitely be getting back to you guys, so feel free to get a conversation going. Uh, we will be having future audio and video interviews, so make sure you check back. But if you have any questions or specific comments, just put them down below, and we can definitely have Dr. Veliki on again to have another recording and another interview. So you guys create the questions this time and we'll make sure he answers them. As far as everything else goes, check back soon and have a great day. Bye.